Okay, so now we're going to take our selection statements one step further and we're going to take a look at this example, cinemaapp2.java. We're asked to develop a cinema application that asks the user for their age and outputs the correct cost for their ticket according to the table below. So we have an age column where we have under 15s and then the cost column says 5 euro and then we have 15 and over cost 10 euro. And often you'll find when you're asked to do a problem or an application that requires the use of a selection statement, you'll be able to create this sort of table with the conditions. So if the age is under 15, the cost is 5 euro. And if the age is 15 or over, the cost is 10 euro. So let's switch over to Textpad now and have a look at this. Here you'll see I've already opened a file and named it cinemaapp2.java. And again, we'll start our problem with the name of the file, cinemaapp2.java, the author, F. Sheridan, and the date, the 15th of October, 2013. Every class begins with public class and then the name of the class, so cinemaapp2. And then we have our main method, public static void main string args and then don't forget to close your two curly brackets for the main method and for the class. Again we have to ask the user for input so we should import java x dot swing dot j option pane and then let's declare any variables we need. Okay now in this instance we are going to store the age again so int age then we'll get our input from the user. So age equals j option pane dot show input dialog null followed by please enter your age. Remembering of course that if we want age to be an integer we're going to have to parse what comes into the j option pane. So integer dot parse int and then close the round bracket at the end. Okay, so integer.parse int and open a curly bracket and then close your, sorry, a round bracket and close your round bracket at the end. So we've read in our age and now that's stored in the variable age. And the next thing to do is our process and our output are going to go hand in hand again because dependent on our if statement, we'll print a different output to the user. So if, and the condition was, if the user was under 15, so if age, is less than 15. So how are we going to say less than 15? Well, this is one of those operators that we probably haven't seen yet. You'll be familiar with it from maths more than likely. So your less than symbol is available on the keyboard just above the space bar on the right hand side. So if age is less than 15, then we're going to print j option pane dot show message dialog null and then your ticket will cost five euro. And then we close our curly bracket. And now if it's not less than 15, then it must be 15 or over. So we have this other keyword else and we simply open our curly bracket straight away. We don't need to put the condition in here because we want to catch everything that's not less than 15, okay? So else j option pane dot show message dialog null your ticket will cost 10 euro. And then remember to close your curly brackets. So this is again where your indenting of your code becomes very important because you'll see we have curly brackets all over the place. So you need to make sure that you can keep track of your curly brackets and that you can see that your if statement, your J option pane is within your if statement and your if statement is within your public static void main, which is within your class. So by indenting it, you can see very clearly where everything lies. So let's compile this again, control and one and control and two to run. Please enter your age. So if I enter five, 
your ticket will cost 5 euro. And if I run it again, and this time I enter 20, my ticket will cost 10 euro. So you can see if we enter any value under 15, we get the output of 5 euro. And if we enter any output over 15, or even 15 itself, we should get your ticket will cost 10 euro. So that's the next step in if statements. This decision where if one thing is true, we do something, but if it's not true, we'll do something else. So your if and then else. And that's important that you just be mindful of the syntax here. Generally, for good practice, we should try to finish with the else statement all of the time, because if the one condition is not true, we want to make sure that we catch whatever other possibilities there are. In the next example, we're going to go a step further again, and we're going to have an if and an else if. So let's take a look at that.